Now, there are many people out there looking for love, and if they're busy using online dating sites to try and find their perfect match. But the course of true love never did run smooth, as Emma Thomas reports. This is Val Mackay. Having lived alone for some years after her husband's death, she decided to give love another try. And after venturing online, she thought she'd found it with a man called Peter. We would chat for four hours a night on Messenger. Um, felt like this was someone I had a real connection with. It was like that, that thing about feeling really, really connected. It was like I'd found love again. Her newfound love said he was a major in the British Army stationed in Baghdad. Then one day he went out on patrol and I didn't hear from him the following morning. And I always had. And so I was really distressed and didn't hear from him for 48 hours, which felt like a lifetime because it triggered all the memories of my husband's death and everything. And then he came back online to sort of say it had been very harrowing. He'd lost a couple of men in battle and, and he wanted to get out of the army. Peter said he wanted to start a new life with Val, but needed money to buy himself out of the military. So he told me where to send some money to, so I sent it. And of course, naturally, that wasn't going to be enough money. Um, so I ended up, uh, very foolishly, sending two more lots of money, totalling just over £8,500. The number of people defrauded in the UK by online dating scams has reached a record high. And the consequences for victims can be life-changing. Tara McDonnell runs a dating agency in Brighton called Southdown's Introductions. She doesn't run an online service, but introduces people face to face. Tara also happens to be a former detective for Sussex Police. There are some victims that have lost up to 1.6 million, others that have lost 800,000. They're life-changing amounts of money to lose. It, to some people, 8,000 could be a life-changing amount of money to lose. Some people are actually bankrupt as a result of the money that they've given to some of these fraudsters. And the sad reality is they're not likely to ever get it back. The victims in these cases are unlikely to get justice because largely the criminals are from abroad and hiding behind email addresses and websites that can't be traced. Nearly 4,000 cases of romance fraud were reported to the authorities last year. In fact, this type of crime is now so widespread, you can get fraud kits online that come complete with template emails to persuade people to part with their money. Dave Hazel has also been looking for love. He enjoys dancing and has always found it a great way to meet people. But after a spell as a singleton, Dave thought he'd found his special someone online in Canada. The pair exchanged countless emails and phone calls. So these are some of the emails that she sent me, aren't they? Yeah, and I could read you some bits yeah. out of it, if you like. Um, right. It says, I miss you so much, Dave Hazel. You become something necessary for my soul and my heart. And I want to turn back the time. I dream about the children we will have in the future. I love you. So it's quite emotive language, isn't it? How do you feel when you read that? I felt really excited and happy. Um, and, you know, I thought my life was going to change for the good. Dave sent his online lover £15,000 to help with medical expenses she said she had and to pay for flights to the UK. I felt... <sighs> over the moon, happy, and I felt that I'd got the right person in my life. Neil Masters from Action Fraud is familiar with many of the common tricks fraudsters use. What you often see in relation to romance fraud is the victim will be told by the fraudsperson 
that they're coming to the country to meet with them and they're going to give them a better life and they're going to sweep them off their feet. Fraudsters will often claim to have lots in common with their victims. Mirroring is one tactic which they find quite effective um, because if you say that you have been divorced, they will say they've been divorced. It's about looking for that attachment that they can then use in order to help reel the victim in. His profile was that he was widowed and that he joined the army because of the grief. And so we felt that we, it felt like we had an instant bond because we'd been through a similar grief experience. Detective turned matchmaker Tara McDonnell says more should be done to protect those of us looking for love online. I do think it should be regulated by one overarching body. There are a number of different bodies out there that are independent, but there is no one overarching regulatory body, and I think that there should be. Having parted with more than £8,000, Val heard nothing more from her online love. Increasingly suspicious, she did some online digging. So I did a search on the internet and found the story of a lady in the States who'd been scammed by the person uh, using exactly the same story, same picture, everything. It's like a part of your world disappears. Um, and, and I also felt really quite ashamed that I could have been so silly. So that, that's, that's what I felt. Um, but I, I'm quite, and, and I couldn't tell anyone, I didn't tell anybody about the money, and I hadn't told anyone about the money before, um, because, because, because I felt ashamed of doing that. Dave was awaiting the arrival of his new love, but then he got an email saying she was visiting relatives in Ghana and was stuck in immigration. She needed yet more money. Dave showed the letter to his bank manager, who immediately smelt a rat. It was only through the bank who said that that isn't genuine. How did you feel when you heard those words? I was devastated. Um, I couldn't believe that it, it had happened. The fraudster had sent Dave these photos to encourage him to hand over the cash, but the police confirmed it was a con. The photos could have been stolen from a genuine dating profile. They told Dave not to send any more money. What's been the impact on you as a victim of all this? Well, my thoughts was, what's the point in living? It made me feel really low, cheap, and I just couldn't trust anybody even me close friends. Former detective Tara McDonnell says there are things people can do to keep the online sharks at bay. The main one is to stay on the dating site, never move to private emails or private messaging. There are checks and balances in place, online dating sites, where certain emails, if they're worded in a certain way, then it, they would be pulled to one side and it would be checked. They may well remove that person if they believe them to be a scammer. Be wary of somebody that keeps asking you lots and lots of questions about you and your background and you suddenly find that you're not giving out, you're not getting much back from them, but you're given a lot of information about yourself. You should never even consider giving out money to anyone that A, you've never met and that you don't know. His enduring love of dancing is helping Dave get over his online experience. I go dancing, which helps me to relax and focus on different things so my mind's not on it all the time. Val says she's learnt from what's happened and she's no longer ashamed about telling her story. If it does help somebody else, anybody sort of watching this, who's just wondering, maybe this is a scam, maybe it's not, but to take a step back and, and to observe if there's then pressure put on you not to, because if someone genuinely loves you, they're not going to put pressure on you to do something that doesn't feel right for you. Emma Thomas reporting.